So I was watching the AK tournament, and shout out to them ERA boys. You guys deserve it, as well as second and third place. Aim assist Kings and T1, you guys were grinding. Keep your heads up. Loss doesn't mean you lost. It means you learned. But anyway, I was watching the AK tournament, and I looked at a lot of players who didn't even make it out the qualifiers with a lot to say in the community, saying that this player is bad, this player got carried, et cetera, et cetera. And that prompted me to ask a question on Twitter that goes, let me ask y'all something, Roll Company. What do you consider skill? Like, do you only look at gunplay and say that's a skillful player, or do you look at something more? And I had a couple people respond, so in today's video, I wanna break down those responses and tell you how much I agree disagree and kind of break down give y'all some breakdowns for you to think about so like share subscribe nappy head millie is back this week and yeah let's get started so it starts off the lady queen not so a twitch streamer for the rogue community you should go check her out but she says a mixture of and gunplay use of utility equipment awareness and thinking tactfully and calculate like i've seen some people be good at gunplay but fuck up because they don't know how to approach or utilize situations now I want to start off with the gunplay aspect because that's where a lot of people in the community I feel as though they give over inferences on gunplay. Let me explain something to you. Let me break it down with the gameplay playing in the back. Gunplay in this game is literally about 15% of the game. If you think gunplay plays a higher role than 15% of the game, I promise you when the new rank comes out in three weeks, you will not get further than gold. Mark my words, Nappy Head Millie said it. Yes, Nappy's negative Nancy, but he gotta tell y'all the truth because ain't nobody else gonna tell you the truth. If you think gunplay is more than 15% of the game, you ain't going nowhere. It's more to the game than gunplay. There's utilities, there's perks, there's abilities there's a lot of stuff that goes with your role that you need to utilize so i'm gonna throw a scenario out for y'all and i want you guys to answer please pause the video if you guys need time to understand what i'm saying let's just say for instance you're playing talent your team consists of talon vi ronin dahlia right let's say the enemy team consists of trench dahlia anvil and let's just throw chalk in there for randomness, right? As a talent player, what should you be rushing and why? Go ahead, think about it, pause the video, and then give me an answer. You ain't even gotta give me an answer. Just wait for my answer, and in the comments, if you feel like I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, but I wanna see what y'all thinking about. If your answer is anything but I need to rush C4 because Trench is a threat with the bot wires for this team, I need you to really sit back, watch your videos, and really kind of think and reevaluate how you play the game. This is not a shot or to say you're bad at the game, but this goes back to what Queen Not So said about people not thinking tactfully and calculating. Sometimes you have to sacrifice some of your utilities to get rid of something that's powerful. Now, while Trench may not be in the strongest of states, that Bob Wire is pretty strong, and why he may have APS. Once your team base out that APS, whatever they need, you're going to need that C4 to get those bot wires out the way in probably the most effective way that you can. You get what I'm saying? It's not about buying flashbangs because they have an anvil on their team. And as well as once you bait utilities, you already have Vi on your team, which she should have incinerators. She should be using her tear gas and maybe, maybe a melee to get rid of the APS and Dahlia should be able to do the same with her smokes to get it out the way. But just thinking about what's on the field, what you can and can't do and how fast you need to do something is a major part that makes players good in this game. Now I got a comment from Jay Fluff that says, I look for their gun skill, their anticipation skill, item skills, ability skills, their movements when they trigger, their reflexes for each skill. All of these are what determine a great player, in my opinion. Now, one thing I want to talk to him about, and I actually agree with, is anticipation skill. Anticipation skills is being able to read the map and anticipate where somebody's going to go. Now, when we're talking about a public team, a pub team, it, it gets kind of obvious what a team is going to do, right? Let's use Skyfield 
prime example, most people on Skyfell like to test that B site first. If the B site doesn't work two out of three times, then they'll kind of rotate to A. Or they'll kind of play the middle, see how everybody else is running, and then they'll go by that. Now, I feel like the people that play the middle are a little bit harder to read on that map because a lot of public teams, they like to rush B and then just rotate if you start shooting at them. That's my experience with it. But I feel like being able to anticipate what somebody's gonna do is a great skill because if you can anticipate it, it means you can catch them off guard off their own play. For example, let's go back to Scottfield. Let's say, let's just say they wanna do the middle play, right? I know they wanna do the middle play. I know they're kind of hovering in that that mid sector so i can rush through a i can get go through mid doors go through the aquarium and probably catch a pick or two allowing for my team to come up because the enemy team has shown that they're going to do that so i anticipate their play another thing that i do agree and i kind of was trying to figure out the word when he says when they trigger that means when the enemy team is on go when they know what their plan is and they're on go you on go like if i know you're about to be on go and i can read when you're on go it, it makes for a great player that means we're in sync being in sync with your teammate your teammate knows when you're going to move i know when my teammates going to move now i'm not saying make a bad play because i've seen plenty of players especially lancer players for too many people to be sitting here crying for lancers lancer players are some of the worst players i've ever seen they be on 10 and not know when to pull off of their triggers. You know what I'm saying? They don't know when to back off. That's what he means by a trigger. Knowing when to go and knowing when to let off the fucking gas and be like, okay, I can't make a play right here. I need to slow down. So I do agree with those two points. One more thing is reflex for each skill. Reflexes for each skill is it's iffy because I play Dahlia. I play Dahlia. And knowing when to link to somebody is what makes her great. A good player will link to somebody and just know to hit revive on that one person. A great player won't link to anybody and know the distance, where they need to be, if they're safe enough to revive that one person. That's my opinion, just not based knowledge of knowing when to revive, how to revive, and who to revive in what situation is great reflexes. And that's just my opinion. But we're going to move on to one more comment, and then I'm going to get into my sentiments of a great player. Now, this comes from the OG Bug. He is also a Twitch streamer, so definitely go check out the OG Bug. Uh, his response is, gunplay, IQ, and comms. IQ of knowing what play will work, comms letting your team know so they'll be prepared, and then gunplay to execute the play. So basically, he's working with a holy trifecta. Gunplay, IQ, comms. You need IQ and gunplay, you need comms. You know what I'm saying? Now, obviously I've talked about gunplay, so we're gonna go right into the IQ and comms. IQ is not gifted. You have to learn how to have great IQ. There are plenty of people with good gunplay and decent comms with no IQ. That goes back to Queen Naso, what she said. There are plenty of people with great gunplay they can shoot their ass off, but their IQ is about as dumb as a bag of bricks. So IQ is something that it's not gifted. You have to work for it. You have to learn. And that goes back to you have to learn the maps. You have to learn the different types of jumps. You have to learn what your role can do and how to best utilize your role to affect the team. You have to understand what your team roles can do and how they best utilize and help you out. And then last but not least you have to know when to give up your idea of carrying to let other people carry those five things is what to me contributes to iq if you can't do one of those five things you have no good iq i said it nappy said it it hey take it with a grain of salt but nappy said it and comms comms to me isn't that important because Yet again, if you're playing in a solo queue, if you're going in the rank, you're playing in a solo queue, a lot of people aren't gonna be talking. Now, if you're in a team-based game, if you have great comms, then yeah, you can be a great player. But comms to me, you can have great comms and still lack in the other two. So I can tell you what to do, but 
I might not have the IQ nor the gunplay to execute what you said. So to me, comms really aren't important. To a lot of other people, they take comms to heart, but it is what it is. But yet again, I want to thank three, these three people for giving their input. Yet again, these are great supporters of the community. And last but not least, I wanna leave off with what I feel is best for the game. What makes you a great player in this game? All right, so since this is me coming from the heart and then this is honestly gonna be the clip for the video, what I see in a great player is not gunplay. Gunplay can always be refined, period. Any so-called pro player, competitive player that says it can't, they're stupid. You can always refine your, gun, your gunplay. I look at a great player as a player that he takes what he's best at, he builds upon it by working on what he's weak at. So if he's weaker on, let's say, using utilities, he builds upon and try to figure out how to use utilities better so his gun can play can be better. If he's bad at reading the map, he tries to work towards being better at reading the map, learning how not to over push, learning where to be and when to be in that predicament to better off his gunplay, right? He then takes that, he goes to a team and he works with that team and he builds upon what the team knows best and he learns from them, right? I'm learning from the people that are better than me or they might know something that is better than I know, right? Somebody might know how to read a map better than I do, so I go to that person to learn how to read the map. We all work together, we come as one, but the biggest thing that makes you a great player is a player that knows when his shit ain't it, when he ain't working the way he is, his guns ain't hitting the way it is, he knows how to take a back seat and let everybody else on his team do what they need to do, right? You are not weak because you can't do everything for the team. You become weak when you try to do too much for the team and you end up hurting the team. This is why I see a lot of good players, a lot of them good players that I was talking about, other players that were in the running for the AK tournament, but they're sitting on the sideline because they couldn't even qualify. They have yet to learn that aspect of Y'all are great players, but y'all do not know when to let other people be great. Y'all don't, y'all ego. A person with the least ego is the most teachable. And when you're teachable, you can always become the greatest player that has ever been. And this is coming from somebody that didn't start off in shooters. I've never started off in shooters. This is probably the first shooting game that I've ever taken seriously. I am a fighting game genius. That's where I strive at, is fighting games. And I take my fighting game knowledge over to here because I know at the end of the day, there's certain aspects I'm not good at, but I'm a decent player. So I'm learning for players that are better than me to become great. You get what I'm saying? That's what I see is a great player, a person that can put everything to the side, his pride to the side, know what his weakness is, try to work on those weaknesses, know what his strengths is, strengths is and use his strengths to the best of his abilities to work for the team that he has and make the team that he has better because he's trying to be better. But that's just me. You guys might have a different thing. Y'all might value gunplay over everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm different. I'm built different. You're built different. And that's the best thing about this community is so many people that's built different that you can always find a style that works for you. But I apologize that I have not been here for a week. I literally had to deal with some mental stuff, you know, going through a lot. I don't want to get into it, but there will be a little bit of changes coming to the channel. I might be throwing some fighting games in. Once I can find a fight game, I actually want to sit through. I'm kind of waiting for Guilty Gear Strive, to be honest. But once I find a fight game that I really want to put my time and effort into, it definitely will be in the channel. Um, but other than that, Nappy and Millie, I'm out. Peace.